as we said before using hydrogen to decarbonize e or electrify is indirect because you are using energy to produce hydrogen let's say green hydrogen by using renewable energies and there are places where hydrogen can be used to decarbonize uh, carbonize as opposed to using directly renewable energy keeping that in mind you need power to hydrogen so you need to worry about the same things as before technology and infrastructure market design and regulation system planning and operation and business models let's start here pressurized alk electrolyzers that's alkalinity <laughs> alkaline electrolyzers electrolyzer is basically where you're splitting some chemical like water to produce hydrogen PEM electrolyzer that's poly polymer electrolyte membrane these are technologies you know you can imagine there is a membrane you are pushing water through and you are separating out of hydrogen from uh, something else SOEC is solid oxide electrolyzer cell AEM is uh, to do anion exchange membrane these are technologies that I will learn about but right now I have read about them and uh, teaching for the first time so don't remember all of the uh, acronyms offhand compressed hydrogen storage hydrogen you know it's always comes up as whether it's dangerous whether it'll explode how to transport it whether it's just a pipeline or whether you can compress it enough because how much you know it's very light so energy density in some sense is very low compared to oil or gas so you need to worry about uh, carrying a lot of it in some form so compressed storage is a big thing liquefied hydrogen is of course uh, another thing everything has energy associated with them so you're always having to go and make sure that in a circular sense end-to-end -end life cycle analysis sense uh, whether you're comp producing hydrogen and compressing it or liquefying it you're still coming out positive in terms of uh, energy yields right so hydrogen ready equipment so that's uh, not easy because uh, Toyota invested a lot in fuel cells and bet big on going hydrogen but didn't work out so they are struggling digital backbone for green hydrogen production and hydrogen leakage detection which is another worry that bothers a lot of people so with EVs you have uh, you know a range anxiety as to whether the battery will take you long enough or whether you'll have a charging station along the way now more you know the range of battery vehicles on one charge is getting longer and longer 200 300 400 kilometers which makes people comfortable once they get used to it with hydrogen you have the leakage problem that people get freaked out about in terms of market design and regulation you have additionality principle so basically additionality means you are doing something that is uh, beyond what would happen anyways okay so you have to figure out what this is in the hydrogen uh, power to hydrogen uh, renewable PPA for green hydrogen <laughs> again sorry about that power purchase agreement these are when uh, utility companies uh, d rely on uh, aggregating and selling or buying and selling so power purchase agreements could be a town community doing that as well cost-effective electricity tariffs electrolyzers as grid service providers so can you directly go from uh, electrolyzer technologies here feeding into a grid um, power grid so that's kind of you know good way to think about it certificates uh, about various requirements on safety cleanliness uh, supply reliability whatever it is in terms of uh, design and regulations hydrogen purchase agreement as opposed to power uh, carbon contracts for difference so what is being saved uh, additionally in terms of uh, you know is it going to be part of the offset is it going to be priced in some ways and so on and being a little brief on that you need to read up regulatory framework for hydrogen network streamlined uh, permitting for electrolyzer projects quality infrastructure or green infrastructure for green hydrogen and regulatory sandboxes where you 
play and figure out what has to evolve in terms of cost effectiveness and uh, profitability I suppose uh, in terms of system planning and operation you have electricity TSOs which are transmission system operator uh, including hydrogen facilities in their planning so electricity transmission system operators must consider hydrogen as part of their planning co-locating electrolyzers with renewable uh, generators so onshore and offshore there are some ideas of uh, offshore hydrogen production green hydrogen production desalination and so on that I have discussed elsewhere smart hydrogen storage operation and P2P uh, purchasing which is power to power uh, routes long-term hydrogen storage uh, you know leak proof and uh, maintaining uh, the uh, energy pressure liquefied whatever uh, is involved in terms of long-term hydrogen storage cooperation between electricity and gas network operators so you have cables running electricity but you may need uh, you know pipelines for hydrogen just like liquid uh, natural gas and so on uh, in terms of business model local hydrogen demand obviously anytime you can um, do production and consumption locally you save a lot on infrastructure losses uh, costs uh, etc hydrogen trade you can go and figure out what that means hydrogen industrial hub how can you have a utility scale hydrogen hub to serve industries maybe revenues from flexibility provided to the power system and sale of electrolysis, electrolysis byproducts like oxygen and heat so if you're splitting uh, water with electrolyzers uh, to produce hydrogen then you have oxygen and of course heat being produced in the process typically they involve uh, you know electrolysis splitting water is not done at cold temperatures in crude uh, basically liquid pyrolysis I'm using random words but you have uh, heat generated so can that be captured and used as well okay so following the other podcasts we will leave this power to hydrogen by itself and I should be able to conclude in the next uh, podcast as far as smart electrification is concerned so we looked at end use sectors here basically in terms of uh, uh, power for mobility and power for uh, hydrogen and power uh, oops sorry uh, power for heat and cool heating and cooling okay come back and see you in the final podcast of smart electrification